Hello again and welcome to Woodburn Rising. Uh, today I have another guest. Uh, her name is Marnie Roddick. She is from the Oregon Gardens in Silverton. And she is the membership coordinator and the group tour coordinator. Mm -hmm. Marnie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really glad. I've been to the Oregon Gardens only once and went to the Frank Lloyd Wright house mm -hmm. there. And it was, it was great. It was exciting. Yeah. But there's a lot of things I didn't see. So what's new? What's going on at the Oregon Gardens? You, oh. ha you have uh, a, a motel there? Yes, we have a resort. Yes. A resort. A full yes. service resort yes. with a spa and wonderful dining experience and live entertainment. 365 days a year in the evening in the lounge. And That's open 365 days too? Mm -hmm. I saw where I thought, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's a hard staffing job, I would think. Well, it's a great team. It's yeah. a wonderful team of workers, and we all love it so much that people are pretty dedicated to the garden. How much How much staff is out there? Um, I, you know, I'm not sure. I uh, just made the employee membership cards, and I'm going to say it's uh, somewhere over 100. Well, and that's yeah. in all the departments. Right. But surprisingly, we only have eight horticulture staff that do the whole garden. Wow. We couldn't do it without our volunteers. So, so you have 80 acres, I yeah. read on the website. 80 acres in the gardens, the landscaped gardens. But the property is 120 acres. Oh, ah, OK. Mm -hmm. So that's the, there's what, 20 gar special gardens? Is, mm, is that 80 acres? More than 25 specialty gardens. Um, the formal gardens pretty much go right up the middle of the garden like a spine. And then surrounding all that are the children's garden, the amazing water garden, our nurseries put in, the demonstration gardens. Right. And uh, we have a pet friendly garden. And one What's of the, What is a pet friendly garden? What does that mean you can learn what plants are yes. friendly what to your to pet, plant, so to speak? What not to plant, <laughs> where to plant them, well, water feature, uh, yeah. clean water. And the whole garden is pet friendly. People do So is that where you can dogs. bring your pets? Mm -hmm. oh, but it's okay. an educational okay. garden. <laughs> and it teaches us, you know, how to make sure that we don't plant something that would make our dog or kitty sick. Right, right, because I thought that was part of it. Mm -hmm. I noticed the, the medicinal garden. Oh, I love that garden. That seems garden. fascinating. Yes, I learned so much. It's very well signed, uh, just enough to get you going. You know, it doesn't tell you all the properties of the plants, but all the plants in our medicinal garden are used in um, naturopathic and homeopathic medicine. And there's some surprises in there. It's like, what so, do they use daffodils for? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you can, you go there and as you say, there's signs. So you see mm -hmm. a plant and then the sign's gonna tell you what it is. Mm -hmm. But there's also, you have tours as well. Do yes, you? Um, April through uh, the end of October and for special groups throughout the year. We do have a couple of operating uh, transportation systems, a little open air trolley and a tram. Wow. And uh, we have- Yeah, 80 a, acres, I guess you'd need something. To yes, if you go around the around. perimeter of the, the gardens, it's about a mile and a half. And it takes about a half hour and it's a narrated tram tour. Mm. And it kind of orients people so that then they can go back to the visitors, visitors the visitor center <laughs> and go to, to the map and see which gardens they really don't want to miss. Right. Because it takes a day, I think. It takes all day to really see everything. Well, you brought some, uh, a couple of pictures mm -hmm. and I'll hold them up and I think we have an early in, in the development process and then one a little bit later. So if you can kind of point out what's going on in, in these, that would be well, this one is in 2001. I think a lot of your viewers are our members. Uh, people were real excited about a garden, a botanical garden of this quality coming to mm -hmm. the backyard of Woodburn. So a lot of people came out and uh, to the groundbreaking. Ah, this that was in the 90s. This was uh, 2001 when we 
first uh, so opened this, when this was the official groundbreaking in 2001? Well, this you... isn't the groundbreaking. This is the opening. Okay. Because okay. there was a lot of time between the groundbreaking and it went till it got to this stage oh. to get all the hardscape in. And but the interesting thing about this picture is. These, this is the pond system. We were the first garden in the United States, and for, I, I've heard the world, um, but definitely the United States, to irrigate the botanical garden out of reclaimed uh, and treated wastewater. Uh -huh. So it's a real collaboration with the city of Silverton on this hillside. We have 25 ponds. Uh, these now do have you know, the water in them. They descend downhill. And by the time it gets down to the road, the water is cooled about 5 to 10 degrees, which is really helping the native fish population. So we're helping the city of Silverton. They're definitely helping us by uh, this. At the height, um, there can be as many as 500,000 gallons of water a day going down. And we use about 200, 250,000 gallons of water a day in the height of summer to water the 80 acres. So is there is there a stream close by or? Well, the or water's is it... pumped up about a mile from the city of Silverton. It comes oh. into pond number one, and then it just flows down. And um, there's some there's a wonderful little rustic nature trail all through the wetland. This is called the Amazing Water Garden. The kids love it because there's tadpoles and frogs and so big that, koi. That's what you mean by fish and yeah. so yeah yes. yeah. So and this doesn't have our visitor center and our education building. Our, this is our parking lot, which is still, of course, there. Right here we have our visitor center. Right here we have an education building. And originally, the 120-acre hillside was owned by a family who raised Arabian horses. Hmm. So the hillside was there, and it was pretty bare because they used it for pasture land and riding. So it wasn't completely overrun with Himalayan blackberry and scotch broom. Right, it was right. pretty bare. Um, and so, it didn't have a lot of trees on it, so all the trees we have planted. Well, we're in the next picture we're going to see a lot of trees. Yeah, well, the so, oak trees, that's a different So what are, okay. what are, what are these? Uh, oh, this is one. Okay, this is the original. This is now our grand hall, our pavilion, where we have all kinds of events all year long for the community, wedding, receptions, big training sessions. So you can rent things out. You can and rent it. Rent and people it, yeah. use it all the time. Weddings and that sort But of it used to be the barn that housed the Arabian oh, horses. Yes, right. Um, the original house is kind of in the shadows, hard to see, but the formal gardens kind of go right up the center here. This is now where our resort is, right up here with a beautiful view. That next picture going to show the yes. those things. Okay. Yes, it okay. will. So, what are what are all these? This in here? is the bosque, and bosque is a Spanish word uh, meaning grove or a group of gathering of trees. Okay. And it's a formal, very formal garden. A lot of weddings in there. These are reflecting ponds, and it's beautiful all year long. But in the fall. It's a canopy. You're just surrounded with. So orange. these are trees in kind of raised planting yes. spots. Or, okay. Okay. Yeah, I think there's uh, 24 of them, if I'm not mistaken, and they're Pacific Sunset Maples, which is a type of maple that was developed by one of our nurserymen in the Gresham area quite a few years ago, hmm. and wow. he designed it to have every shade of the sunset. So there's from pale yellow to the deep, deep red, and they're magnificent trees. So, so. When, do, when does those colors come out? Oh, September, October. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was stunning this year. So what's, what's this here? Oh, that's the children's garden. And that's back in the days before it's, it's now very well grown up. This is our axis garden, and we plant our, we grow our own plants and propagate from seed and propagation in our greenhouses. Hmm. And we do between 40 and 50,000 annuals every year. And most of them are clustered right in through here. It's, it's amazing. Of course, they So can you plant. Buy, buy plants here? Mm -hmm. or? Oh, yes, okay. the visitor center, which we can see in our next picture, has a little nursery next to it. Ah. Yeah. So what's what's this? It's some oh, kind of design I love or... that. Yes, it's a very formal garden. It has a box hedge, and then we plant thousands of annuals in it, and that's the rose fountain. Oh, yeah. So it's that's really pretty in the summertime. 
time for the next one? Yeah. Let's okay. What a difference. Yes. What a difference yeah. 10 years will make. <laughs> ah, 10 years, yeah. <laughs> now this is a different perspective, so your viewers will have to kind of take a minute. No, there, yeah, this is looking that, west, yeah, right. um, kind of almost due west. West is off this way. This is an oak grove. These are uh, native Oregon white oaks, and they're about 200 years old. I was going to say, those didn't grow in 10 years. No. <laughs> yeah, they've been there a long time. Right. And there's one signature oak. Uh, well, I think this is him right over here, yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. He's 400 years old. It's wow. one of our Oregon heritage trees, so it's protected by the state of Oregon. And it's a very gnarly, crumply looking guy. It's, it's a beautiful place. We have bees down here in our meadow. And your viewers might want to know that in the next, well, actually today I saw daffodils. I've been watching mm -hmm. them, yeah, they've but been today they're right. full bloom. Oh, this wow. hillside they're ahead of mine. On <laughs> I, yeah, I was shocked when I saw them. But this hillside with the oaks is covered with thousands of daffodils in you know, like wow. late February. They went into April last year because I started April first, and they were just a riot of daffodils. Sounds beautiful. Yeah, it is. Here's that barn, which we now use as an event center. So where are the things we didn't see? Well, Can one we... of my favorites is the market garden, which is... Over here? Yes. That also has a lot of weddings. Um, we have a woman who manages... Our horticulture is divided up, kind of according to their passion, really. She has 15 acres that she manages in that neck of the woods, and mm. uh, we grow tons of food. Our Matthew from our cafe at the visitor center will go steal every day. He goes in there in the height <laughs> of summer, and whatever you eat at his cafe at the visitor center, all the food comes from there. So the lettuces and the, the berries and the nuts, he makes use of all of it. Um, so where is the visi visitor center? Well, here? on this one now, here's our visitor center right okay, here. Yeah. And this is the education building. And these weren't on that other map. This entry garden is really something. Boy, Barb takes fabulous care of that. So where's the, is, is the motel here? Yeah, well, no, motel? not in this picture. It's right about where your elbow is. Oh, it's over here. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. And it, yeah. that's the top of the hill, and it looks down on all, all right. of this. So where's in the uh, Frank Lloyd Wright house? That is um, over here. Let's see, back, it's, it's off, it's right here. Okay. You can't really yeah. see it. Yeah. But that's a quite a story, too. Did you want to, um, you know, the, the Frank Lloyd Wright House, it's the only one in Oregon. And it's called the Gordon House because the, the Gordon family commissioned it. Get positioned around here again. Yes. And uh, it was set for demolition. They had it situated on the Willamette River with a view to the east of Mount Hood, perfectly centered, like Frank right. Lloyd Wright would do. And right. it, then the river was right there. It was just an idyllic setting. When they sold their property, I think it was 15 acres, but don't quote me on that. <laughs> um, they, the family didn't want the house, and didn't, so they were just going to demolish it. And the Frank right. Lloyd Wright Society said, no. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. They really hustled to move it, and so that took a lot of effort and money. Really took the did. whole thing apart, or yeah. I, I don't know how they did it. Yeah. but you took numbered the tour, all the pieces, the, right? Yes. yes, And the docents are so dedicated yeah. and wonderful. I learned a lot. Well, it's um, really fun to see mm -hmm. that house. And, yes, yeah. he thought of everything. If you're any fan of architecture at all and of Frank Lloyd Wright, mm -hmm. it's really wonderful. And I thought in Silverton, gee. Amazing. <laughs> how did how did this garden, which uh, has a lot of support and and has changed through the years, mm -hmm. and one of the uh, I wasn't it originally like going to go to Salem or something or well the Oregon but Association of Nurseries. It's a great is, story. Yeah. Um, this the idea was fifty years old. The Oregon Association of Nurseries, which back then was nurserymen. Um, they talked about doing a botanical garden to showcase, because agriculture is our number one industry in Oregon, right. and the agriculture portion, nursery industry, is 
a huge, if you saw a pie chart, it's the big yeah, chart. Right. So they really wanted to um, showcase and, and be like Bouchard Gardens up in Victoria, mm -hmm. uh, which is a venerable garden that's been around for over 100 years. That was their dream. Well, they, it was hard to find a piece of land to do that, and irrigation was a problem. So when the city of Silverton had this hillside that they purchased and started their water project where the treated wastewater had to cool, and it would go down these ponds oh, to they cool. Oh, they started that first. Yeah. Yes. Mm. And the nursery To use the, what was, they, what was that, to use the treated wastewater for? They wanted to cool it because the fish, for the native fish population, the water oh, they were releasing was too warm. Oh, the environment. Mm -hmm. OK, OK. Ah. So they pumped it up there. And so I don't know how it exactly came together, but the nurserymen right. said, whoa, beautiful hill, lots of water. And they started the foundation, which is still in existence and operating. And that's how, how they How started. many people visit? the gardens annually or do you have that's a wonderful question i wish i had the answer you know i should know that i don't know yeah one of the things that um woodburn's looking at is looking for a train stop here mm -hmm. and when you start you know looking at the oregon garden in terms of people could take the train of course we have to get them over there yeah we'll have to that's figure that one out <laughs> <laughs> but it, i would think it would be quite a few and that's going to increase as the garden develops. Mm -hmm. And we talked about that a little bit when I first met you and we, you know, what's going on. It, it looks like there is a push to move the garden toward another phase of development. You know, we've had 10 years, there's a lot of trees, we've seen the pictures. And it's moving to another stage of maturity where it will be. Yes, it's definitely you know, matured a lot. And I see it growing. I started as a tram driver. It was a little summer job. And I drove the tram all day long for hours. And I met people from all over the world. And the most interesting thing was that the local people said, I didn't even know this was here. Right. So many people right. from Portland and Salem and you know the surrounding area some people even stumbled on it because we have a very that, beautiful that's what I did. entryway. Yes. Really? Yes. And, yeah, they and, go, what and, is this big exactly. entryway? And then there's a Frank Lloyd Wright house <laughs> there, and, and the things weren't as mature, and it was during the winter, and I, mm -hmm. I think a little wet, so I didn't get a chance to look at all the gardens. But Oh, our horticulture staff did something completely different this winter. They, I've been going out there for years. Um, as a mom with the school, we have a school program in education, so mm -hmm. I go out with a bunch of school kids and just, so I was you, a member you live early in on. No, no, I don't, but I'd love to. It's a wonderful <laughs> little town. <laughs> um, but uh, I've been going out there and this winter. I always have liked it in the winter, but the horticulture staff took everything down to its lowest level. It was beautiful. And they, they just trimmed everything back like you would spring clean at your house. Mm -hmm. Deep cleaning is what they did. And they didn't plant any wintering over. Sometimes they plant daisies or those little cabbage things, none of that. And they had the most gorgeous salt blue or bluish black, deep, dark dirt. <laughs> <laughs> and they put it on all the beds. Uh -huh. and, and you could see everything. You could, when you're in the garden, as we could see, there's 20-some gardens. There's right. almost 30 different areas to explore. And when you're in one in this height of summer, you're in that one. You can't see anything. That's, and it's insulated, so you can't hear anything, just the birds and the frogs that are in that. Right. But in the wintertime, you could stand at one end and see clean across the garden. You could hear everything. You could hear conversations, and you could hear frogs and birds and it was right yeah and now spring's coming and our daffodils and our hostas are all popping up but it's um kind of sad because it was it was just so unique this year and i hope they do that again next year right. so um what does it cost to come and tour the gardens um if you stay at the resort it's complimentary with your resort stay, and if you just come for a day trip, it's uh, very reasonable. It's eleven dollars is pretty much the general admission. Mm -hmm. um, children, 
our students are, I believe, $8, and kids like 11 to 5 or $4, and 4 and under are free. And then we have group rates. If you bring a group of 15 or more, it's $8. And we have special tours that we'll give. Or we have a Plants of the Bible tour. And no matter the size of the group, those are just $20. So mm -hmm. if a big bus of 45 people come, it's $20. Total, you, not per right. person. <laughs> That's good. So you also, um, school kids come mm -hmm. for free. Well, we have an uh, education program. Right. Um, that's been there a long time because my kids are getting up there and we, I went there several times over the years. Mostly it's for, we have a fifth grade program. Uh, it's funded. The schools apply for the grant and we have a great. So any school anywhere mm -hmm. can come? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they I mean, come as far away. I think Lapine might be the farthest that mm -hmm. they come, because you know it's expensive and hard to get here. But um, but you also yeah. I saw where you reimburse transportation, or there is a some type of reimbursement. I think there is a reimbursement. If you, you know, there's a team of uh, women that run the education program. So let's say uh, if if a busload of kids from fifth graders, or or it said. K through 12, too. Mm -hmm. The Oregon Forest Resource Institute also has a program. So th that's very interesting. So someone, they could come and see if they're interested in forestry or... Exactly. We've had more than 50,000 children through learning about landscaping, horticulture, and forestry. And that's, we, a, that's it, it, four hours and you, have, you get lunch. I think they bring their lunches, yes, but we do provide, okay. we have outdoor classrooms and they... Right. Yeah. It's I mean, fun. it just sounds very interesting. I just wonder, you know, if every school knew about it, I, they would want to take advantage of yes, it. Yes, we do. We, we, I don't know how they publicize it within the school systems, but we have a full load during the times that it's available. Oh, okay. And schools apply. Right, right. So. It's, it's wonderful. And when we do have, when you work there and you have two or three busloads of kids around and you can hear them all over, it's right. great. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. Absolutely. Then, so, so this resort concept, mm -hmm. you have, mm -hmm. you can come and stay. Mm -hmm. and what are those uh, rates run? Do you have an idea? It, it depends. You know, if you watch, it's a Moonstone property. And Moonstone is a small um, hotelier out of California. Oh. They have two properties here in Oregon. We have the one at Cottage Grove, the Village Green, that has a real cute little garden attached to it. All their properties ha have gardens attached mm -hmm. to them. That's their niche. And very high quality and reasonably priced uh, lodging, I believe. And it is privately owned. It's a, are yeah. they kind of small cottages, or are they connected? Or I, I we, saw them, but I can't re quite remember. Yeah, if they it looks were. like a neighborhood. Yes, it we does. We have, uh, I think there are 17 little cottages, each with six rooms each. And the rooms all have their own fireplace, oh, okay. little mm -hmm. kitchen area. Not a full kitchen, but you know the microwave and the refrigerator. Right. Um, and their own private deck or patio. That's really nice. It is. And the, the restaurant there. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> I eat there we almost every day. Do we have a star day. rating or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, but our chef is very inventive and there's specials every day. And we, it, the people that work there every day, we can't wait till we find out at 10 o'clock, what's the soup today? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you have a special chef that does mm -hmm. good things. Yeah. And yeah, we have a great team in the kitchen. How, how big is the restaurant? Will it oh, I don't know what it seats. Oh, uh, gosh. I mean, pretty good size? Yes, or? it is. Yeah. Like, yeah. They could probably get, I don't know, over 100 because the one morning glory room, um, you can get about 20 to 25 people seated for a meal in there. So, so you serve breakfast or they serve breakfast, mm -hmm. lunch, and breakfast, dinner? Breakfast, lunch, yeah. and dinner. Beautiful yeah. view of the resort, too. Oh, ah, yeah. And an outdoor dining in the when the weather cooperates. I just wonder how, you know, I, I wasn't aware of it and how many people are aware of it. So, I mean, that you're the coordinator, membership groups, 
What about just marketing from that? Oh, we have a wonderful marketing team, and they, uh, the events and marketing staff work very close together, and we do, we just added the new Christmas this year. We had uh -huh. Christmas in the Garden. Um, so getting one of those rooms at one of these times probably be difficult. On weekends during an event, yes, you have to plan ahead. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> but not always, you know, people call and cancel. Right. Um, but we have our brew fest is our next big event coming up. We just had our quilt show, which was wonderful. And I um, had some groups, so I is drove this the tram. Is this in the barn where you keep yeah, it inside? Yeah, in the yeah. pavilion, yeah. yeah. Pavilion, sorry. And we retrofitted the barn. <laughs> it used to be barn, but you can still see where well, the like stables <laughs> and the stalls and the tack uh, rooms. We yeah. left, you know, the sliding doors and the rustic right. wood. It's just, Good. Yeah, yeah, it's a really nice space, an event space. And it can be transformed. It has the pretty lights in the ceiling, and when those are on, you know, the weddings are all very beautiful. And yeah. Oh, it sounds sounds really nice. But the end, last week of April, it's kind of crazy in there because that's our brew fest. So we, brew fest know, is is about uh, about beer, Oregon local beer. beer, yeah, yeah. microbrewers, right. yeah, and they apply and um, they kind set up their little corner and there's tasting. When do you do that? When is that? The last weekend of April, always. Oh, okay kind of juxtaposition to the Oktoberfest or something. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then all summer we do movies. Um, I believe every Thursday night for a f several weeks, you know, July, August. And then we have sunsets in the garden, which is lovely in the sensory garden, because that's the time of year when the sun is setting directly behind our rain curtain. Yeah. And uh, there's some great <laughs> photos. Photographers right. come that. So, it sounds, you know, really wonderful. It sounds, you know, and I hope you keep building it and it gets better and better. It's Thank it, you. the idea after a hundred years, it'll be world renowned. I hope so. <laughs> I wish I could be here driving the tram in a hundred years. <laughs> Are you still driving the tram? Sometimes when I have a group, yes. It's one of my favorite things. To, right. When we're really busy and the other tram driver's like, I can't take that big load. You're kind of like a kind of like a docent though doing that yes, too. Yes, it yeah, is. Right. It's fun to tell the story of the yeah and find yeah. out where everybody's from and try to give them a good time. I, you know, I really believe in that Disneyland philosophy that people have a lot of choices where to go, spend their right. money, spend their time, and when they come to our garden, I want, I really want them to have a memorable time with their family. Well, good morning. I really appreciate your coming on. Oh, thank you. And, uh, you know, look forward to seeing you out there. I'm, I know I'm going to visit you know, from time to time and go again. Anytime. Good. <laughs> Thanks, Marty. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching.